The last time I made a top 10 aftermarket part video, there was only 10 aftermarket parts in the game. Now that we're near the end of season four, we have 36 conversion kits and even more aftermarket part attachments. And for the sake of this video, I'll mainly be covering just the conversion kits with some exceptions. So let's get into it. At number 10, we have the Core 45's XRK IP-V2 conversion kit. Despite it being named like a monitor, this kit is pretty good. Using this aftermarket part not only gives the core access to more attachment options, but also gives it a binary trigger. This allows the weapon to fire around every time the trigger is pulled and released. This allows you to rack up damage quickly and can be absolutely deadly when you get into a good firing rhythm. But its lower ammo count makes it not as effective, so that's what lands it on the back end of our list. And here is the build that I recommend for the Core 45 conversion kit. At number 9, we have the Jack Annihilator Bullpup Kit for the Pullmount 762. Now, I'm not the smartest man, so I don't know exactly what a bullpup is, but I do know that this thing hits like a truck. It basically keeps the same damage as the default LMG, but gives it an increase to its movement stats and fire rate. If that still hasn't sold you on this kit, it also has a whopping 1200 bullets when pack-a-punched. This is one of the more satisfying AMPs with mag of holding if you enjoy spraying lead for long periods of time. And here's the build that I recommend using with the Jack Annihilator kit. At number 8, we have the Jack Thunder LMG kit for the Sidewinder. This AMP not only transforms the Sidewinder into an LMG, but it also has a unique ability where its fire rate increases the longer that you shoot it. This makes finding a nice spot to hold up at all the more satisfying when you can just melt through hordes of zombies with ease. And it helps you rack up some serious damage on bosses. Pairing this kit with Mag of Holding is like pairing Prime Kobe with Shaq. It's just a nasty combo. And here's the build that I recommend using for the Jack Thunder LMG kit. At number 7, we have the Jack Etten Double Barrel Kit for the AMR9. If the name didn't already give it away, this adds a second barrel to the SMG, and you don't gotta be a mathematician to figure out this will double your bullet output. Normally, doubling the amount of bullets being fired will just make the weapon run out of ammo faster, but with the largest magazine equipped and after pack-a-punching, you'll have 200 rounds in the mag and 800 in reserve. With Maggle holding, this means you'll have 1,000 rounds at your disposal without the need to reload. And just to top it off, no offense to the LeBron fans, the damage output with its SMG is pretty crazy. It had no problems dealing with anything that tier 3 threw my way. And here's the build I recommend using for the Jack Etten double barrel kit. At number 6, we got the Jack Headhunter Carbine Kit for the Rival 9. This turns the SMG into a rifle-like 3 round burst with more range and a boost to headshot damage that the name would suggest. This combined with Deadshot's critical hit damage bonus makes this conversion kit absolutely melt almost any enemy you come across. I definitely recommend giving this weapon a try if you haven't before. And here is the build that I recommend using for the Jack Headhunter Carbine. At number 5, we have the Jack Raven Kit for the MCW. This equips the assault rifle with .300 rounds, giving it increased damage at close range, a faster fire rate mobility, better handling, and better hip fire spread. While I was revisiting the aftermarket parts in preparation for this video, this is the kit that surprised me the most. This kit's damage output combined with the increased rate of fire made it incredibly satisfying to use in tier 3 and above. I would have put this higher on the list if it had a bit more ammo with its total being at 560 rounds, which is pretty low for an AR and zombie. I found myself running out a few times, putting me into tough situations, but besides that issue, this is a very strong and fun to use aftermarket part. And here's the build that I recommend using for the Jack Raven kit. At number four, we have the Jack Ferocity Carbine Kit for the Renetti. This converts the three round burst pistol into a full auto SMG and opens it up to more attachment options. To be honest, I really slept on this aftermarket part and upon revisiting it, it showed me that I've really been missing out. Despite this being a pistol conversion, it can really deal some damage. This combined with the boosted fire rate gives this the ability to take out almost anything pretty quickly. This is undoubtedly a top tier weapon when using this kit and I hope you guys don't sleep on it like I did. And here's the build that I recommend for the Jack Frosty Carbine Kit. Before we get into the top three, I want to put a spotlight on a few honorable mentions that just missed out on making it onto this list. The first honorable mention is the Jack Requiem Kit for the Cast Off 762 and 545. This kit completely removes recoil from the weapon, allowing you to be as accurate as possible and allows you to add attachments that negatively affect recoil with no downside. Combining this kit with Maggle Holding allows you to send a flurry of bullets wherever you want accurately without the need to reload. Out of the two 
because don't have this is compatible with i would recommend using the 545 because it can hold more total ammo while having a similar damage output as the 762 but here are the builds that i recommend using for this conversion kit here's the 762 and here's the 545. The next honorable mention is a double feature because they're pretty similar. These being the Jack Decimator kit for the Lockman Shroud and the Jack Patriot for the M16. These kits convert the weapons from a three round burst to fully automatic weapons. The Jack Patriot for the M16 is a very good kit, but it's a little redundant considering the M16 becomes fully automatic when you pack a punch it anyways. As for the Jack Decimator kit for the Lockman Shroud, it already has a full auto counterpart with the Lockman Sub, but I do believe that the Jack Decimator has a faster fire rate and a better damage output than just the normal Lockman. But the huge downside to using the Jack Decimator is that it only has 440 total rounds, making it run out of ammo pretty quickly. Anyways, here's the build that I recommend for the Jack Patriot, and here's the build that I recommend for the Jack Decimator. And for our final honorable mention, we have the Akimbo Brace Stock for the WSP Swarm. This is one of my most used weapons in this game and it even ranked pretty high in the last aftermarket part list that I did. But since then it's received a few nerfs and hasn't felt like it's kept up with the power creep of some of the newer weapons but it'll always have a special place in my heart. And you can have a special place in my heart too by liking this video if you're enjoying it and maybe consider subscribing to see more content like this. Now getting back to the list, coming in at number three, we have the Jack Scimitar Kit for the FJX Horus. The FJX is already one of the best weapons in this game and the aftermarket part just makes it even better. This improves the range, accuracy, and recoil control while also giving it access to a drum mag with a larger ammo capacity than it can normally equip. This puts its ammo count at a whopping 1,020 total rounds, allowing you to slap zombies around for as long as your heart desires. And it'll shred through just about anything tier three and above can throw at. You. Anyways, here's the build that I recommend for the Jack Scimitar Kit. At number two, our runner up is the Jack Thumper 656 conversion kit for the RGL 80. This aftermarket part allows you to use three different ammo types on this grenade launcher, those being the slugs, drill charges, and sticky grenades at the cost of ADS and sprint to fire speed. But the only ammo type we're going to be focusing on is the slug rounds. These are by far the best option as they increase recoil and gun kick control, and most importantly, they increase the fire rate. And at the time I'm recording this, there is a visual glitch with this kit where it doesn't look like you have it equipped when you load into zombies but trust me it works and you can tell these are equipped by looking in the bottom right showing that the attachment is applied to the weapon anyways pairing this with phd to avoid self-explosive damage mag of holding to avoid reloading and dead wire detonators make this one of the most mindless weapons in the game you don't even need to think 99 percent of the time all you gotta do is shoot at your feet and you'll obliterate everything around you the only thing you really need to pay attention to is your ammo count but with the rate that you'll be killing zombies there should be plenty of ammo on the ground to keep you going using this aftermarket part combined with the previous mentioned acquisitions is good enough for you to solo the unstable rift and if you want to make it even more viable you can throw in an ammo mod like brain rot to help deal with bosses better and just in case you need it here's the build for the jack thumper and at number one the best aftermarket part in the game is the jack limb ripper under barrel chainsaw attachment this is the only attachment amp to make this list and it's for a good reason it's an actual chainsaw that you can add to your gun this attachment is basically a wonder weapon being able to take down tier 3 zombies in an instant and absolutely shredding through elites and bosses whenever i use it i always build my weapon around movement speed and nothing else because whatever gun it's attached to is just a glorified handle that cannot live up to the destruction that this thing puts out. On top of it scratching that Gears of War part of my brain, it also doesn't even need to be refueled like the Jack Purifier Flamethrower underbarrel attachment. But don't go patching it, Sledgehammer. Don't get any ideas. Please just let us have this. Please. Anyways, you can use this weapon and go and get set up in a spot that funnels zombies to you and all you gotta do is stand there revving it and anything it touches will get torn up with minimal effort. The the reason why I put this at number one is because it needs the least amount of setup to do the most devastating amount of damage out of basically anything in this game. You don't need mag of holding, you don't need dead wear or detonators, you don't need PhD, or you don't even need to be fully pack-a-punched in tier 3 for this still to be extremely viable. This is by far the best designed aftermarket part aesthetically and is the most powerful option with the least amount of setup required. In conclusion, chainsaw go burr. Anyways, that's all I got for my top 10 aftermarket parts in zombies so far. Let me know down below if you agree with this list or if there's anything I'm missing out on that should have been here instead. But I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. Thank you guys for watching. I truly appreciate all your love and support and I will see you in the next one. Later.